Hi there, today I'm looking at the Neewa F100 video monitor. What you get in the box, how to set it up and how it performs. If you find this useful, please remember to like the video and subscribe to my channel. If you want to buy one of these, follow the link below. Right, so here's what arrives in the box from a certain very large online retailer. It comes in a cardboard box and then a plastic wrapper, and this is what comes inside it. So we have here the monitor itself. We have this very attractive carry case here, and we have a charger and a battery as part of the whole setup. So obviously the first thing we can do is get the battery charged up. So battery chargers here and it's a, a straightforward micro USB USB connection I'm sure you've seen these a dozen times okay so we'll get this charged up and then we can take a look at the TV itself the charger plugs into any USB mains adapter then you slot the battery in giving it a firm push into place the charge level is shown by this cool little backlit LCD scale. Right, so let's uh, see what comes in the box itself then. All very nice, all very smart. Um, straight away, there's the monitor itself. And we take the rest of the box out. Uh, usual bits of paperwork, instruction manual, uh, hot shoe ball heads some cables, uh, the hood and a frame for the hood I guess. There we go. All very good. Let's have a look at the screen itself. It comes in this anti-static padding stuff. And there we go. There's the screen. Uh, we can take the protective layer off. Not very easy to do. There we go. And there it is. All very nice, all very smart. The battery sits there. Loads of connections here we'll go into in a minute. That's very good. Then there's the screen here, which um, is quite simple. It all sort of goes together quite straightforwardly. Bits of Velcro. There we go, so it's a, a hood for the viewing screen, excellent. And uh, HDMI cable to mini HDMI, very important because that's how we're going to get the signal from the camera. And there's uh, an RGB connection as well. And there's an interesting little thing which holds that in place. We'll show, I'll show you that later on. And the ball socket joint here for mounting onto a camera. Hot shoe, hot shoe mount there, clips on. Then this, this thing, the whole TV clips onto that. Okay, so there we go. Let's put the thing together, see what we've got. Okay, so here's the connectivity for the screen. Uh, at the top here is a USB upgrade socket. That's to connect to a PC if you want to do a firmware upgrade at any point. The OSD controller socket is for a remote controller for the on-screen display. Then you have uh, headphone sockets, really useful. AV socket is if your input is the red, yellow and white AV plugs. That's the other end of the adapter that plugs in there. Then we have the HDMI socket here. It comes with two HDMI adapter cords, one's for mini HDMI, one's for micro HDMI, so they'll cover pretty much any input you want. And at the bottom there's a 12 volt DC if you have a mains adapter that can plug in there as well. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do here is put on the support for the sunscreen, sunshade, and the hood clicks in. It's a bit fiddly lining up all these bits and pieces, but you know, you get there in the end and just push that one over. Okay, that's nice and tight now, so the hood's in place. And that's, uh, the, there's a Velcro thing around here, the hood Velcro's on around the edge, okay? Okay. 
So the next thing I'm going to do is put the HDMI cable in, um, which comes with it. My one is going to be the adapter that goes to the mini HDMI as opposed to the micro HDMI, just plugs in there. Now this um, jiggles around, that can get loose, that can disconnect halfway through a shoot so you don't really know what's going on. So they've very carefully and cunningly added this little adapter plate plugs on there. See so if we can get this in place. There's a washer that goes underneath there and then a screw which goes through the whole thing. It's very fiddly to do, I have to say. Um, it's kind of good if you start, start the screwing thing first and go through there and then try and put it on. As you can see, it's rather, there we go, it's caught now. So once it catches, you can push this to, until it really holds the HDMI cable in place like that and then tighten it and there you are that's not going to jiggle around it's not going to come out halfway through a shoot and leave you wondering what on earth is being filmed very good piece of kit okay and finally it's uh, putting the battery on pretty straightforward um, you can see two battery connections down here snugs in and then give it a good push and it connects into place clicks in very secure okay so then we're ready to go just uh, this little LED here is on red when it's off and the, but the battery is charged so it's like standby and you press the on off button it comes on to blue and then the screen fires up when there's no signal the background is in blue we'll have a look at that later um, but you can start setting menus here uh, there's the picture here so uh, the first one is picture mode. This is like a preset contrast, brightness, color saturation, and things like that. Um, there's standard, there's mild, there's dynamic, and there's user defined. If you're going to do it yourself, then you've got your brightness, contrast, saturation, color saturation, and sharpness, which is kind of like a little bit like contrast, but on a, on a small scale, artificial sharpness, and color temperature. So Set, set you want it um, a defined one yourself or the two options are like a warm one 6500 or a cooler 9600 kelvin okay so those are some options there i'm going to pretty much leave everything in automatic have a standard picture mode just see how we go first of all um, the next menu heading um, adjust the system settings so you have the on-screen display language you've got all sorts of possibilities here obviously I'm going to do English because I speak English and I don't speak a lot of these languages um, in fact most of them I don't speak aspect ratio I'm going to keep on auto this is the aspect ratio of the screen itself so it will flip between 4x3 um, HDMI widescreen and so on and so forth depending on what comes in no signal that's the background color if there's no signal detected, I have it on blue because I'm a traditionalist. Uh, OSD trans, that's the transparency of the background image when you have the on-screen display showing and you can set the position of the screen up and down and so on. Oh, you have a reset facility and you have um, a software upgrade or, or firmware upgrade. Remember, you can plug it into a USB for that. Um, OSD time off. If you've got the on-screen display on, you can have like how long it comes on for before switching itself off automatically. I'll leave that off for the moment. There's a few more system things here. There's a center marker. Um, I, I guess I'll have that on. There's a safe frame. I, I like safe frames because it tells you, gives, gives you a good idea of where you should keep the subject at all times if possible. Um, if things are right on the edge of the frame, um, you know, text or something like that that's important. You, you may well miss it. Some video systems crop. So I like to keep the safe frame on. I'm going to keep it at 96%. Um, the rest, image freeze, image flip, check field. Well, they're, they're not for me. Not, not in the sort of things I need to worry about. And that's that. The last thing over here is the mode button. This just switches between the input, between AV input and uh, HDMI input. So just want to leave that on HBI. And you can uh, pre-program for function buttons as well. 
I'll look into doing that. I don't think I'm going to need to be doing this because my use of this is going to be very, very basic, very simple. So there we go. Let's get this connected up to a camera and see what it looks like. Okay, to put it onto the camera, first thing we're going to need to do is put the hot shoe adapter on. This is just a quarter inch thread at the bottom. Because it's a quarter inch thread, that's pretty much standard. You can get tripods, you can put it on a tripod separately. You can get it on a, a multi-point holder if you've got something like a rifle mic as well to worry about. But there you go, that's simple enough. This just goes into the hot shoe of your camera. The monitor can be mounted away from the camera in which case the HDMI lead allows you still to see all the exposure and recording information you would get from your camera's own rear screen. This is especially useful if you want to interact with the subject of your shots, maybe pointing out specific details. Alternatively, you can attach the monitor to the hot shoe facing you, so you're sure to be in shot as you record those commentaries made to camera. There we go, I hope you found it useful. If you want to buy one of these, why not follow the link directly below? And by the way, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel for more reviews. See you next time.